Thanks for checking out my new Beginner's Amateur Radio video. My name is Bud and my call sign is KD0PHG. I'm located near Denver, Colorado and I am a member of the Denver Radio Club. Please visit our website at www.w0tx.org. Up on the screen right now I've got a list of some links that you might, might find very important, uh, so you may want to jot them down. Uh, the video doesn't have uh, a lot of time on it, so uh, if, you, uh, if you can't jot it down because uh, you don't have time or a pen or whatever, uh, you can find it on our website also. Again, that's www w0tx.org I'm going to scan down a little bit because I couldn't fit it all in the video on the screen anyway hopefully you'll get a chance to jot some of these down but again if you can't I'll try to mention it further on in the video now to some meat and potatoes for the new person Okay, so now you have your technician's license and a call sign which is in the FCC database. Congratulations on this first important step. To get on the air, you're going to need a radio, an antenna, and possibly a power supply for the equipment, depending on what radio you choose. We'll now go on to show some of the different equipment you may want to consider. But we, before we do, we want to make some very basic information available to you. When operating on a VHF or a UHF ham radio, when you hit the microphone or the push to talk button on a handy talkie, uh, known as the PTT, you will need the radio to be programmed with the frequencies that you are going to be using in your area. Ham Radio Outlet has several books that give the frequencies for repeaters all over the country. Again, just Google Ham Radio Outlet and search on repeater frequency book. There are many simplex re, uh, frequencies as well as re repeater frequencies. When you talk on a frequency that's for simplex, you're only talking between your radio and someone else's radio uh, that's on that frequency with only the power the two radios have. Because of this, the range is quite limited, usually a few miles. That's where repeaters come in. When you talk on a repeater frequency, your small signal goes to another station, which is usually on a tall building or in the case of Denver, a mountaintop at elevations around 11,400 feet. Your signal is then retransmitted at a much higher wattage, usually around 100 watts. Using repeaters you can talk 100 miles easily and more depending on the terrain and obstructions. Now let's talk about the choices you have in radios. I'll be using my own equipment on my desk to illustrate some of the possible choices. Okay, this radio is a Yezu FT2900 VHF only radio capable of up to 75 watts. It's dialed into a frequency of 145.050, which is the frequency which is used in our area to send packet information. The antenna used is an outdoor Arrow J-Pole dual band VHF UHF model that needs no ground plan. This is used for emergency communications as well as sending data to friends who are interested in packet radio. It's similar to a chat service or email, but during parts of Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, when cell phones and landlines weren't operating, it was the only form of communications for quite some time. 
This is because it is using radio signals and has nothing to do with either the internet or phone lines. Obviously this is very important in conditions like Katrina. The box sitting on top of the radio is a TNC, a terminal node controller, which is needed to do packet radio. The large box that the radio and TNC are sitting on is a 20 watt power supply which supplies 13.8 volts to power all the mobile radios I have. Since mobile radios are used in vehicles which of course have their own power. This is a screenshot of the software that displays the packet information that we just talked about. As you can see, the bottom line, my station just sent out a beacon. I'm going to send another one out just so you can see. Okay, it just transmitted my beacon information. Uh, if I had the time to show you longer, uh, if somebody came in and tried to send a message, it would also show that. So I'm going to move on to the next frame. This radio is a Kenwood D710, which is a dual band VHF UHF radio that is capable of APRS, which is Automatic Position Reporting System, and packet operation. It uses a Slim Jim antenna that I just have sitting inside my shack here attached to the wall. It's a pretty simple antenna. I'll show a picture of it after this. The left of the screen is the Kenwood program. Uh, the radio is programmed for VHF. The right screen is programmed for UHF. That's just the way I chose to do it and you can configure it a lot of different ways. This combination of this indoor antenna and this uh, radio allows me to hit every repeater in the Denver area uh, with no outdoor antenna and no need for an antenna with a ground plane. Additionally, I can pull this radio off my desk, put it in my vehicle, and friends can track me if I turn on APRS. As long as they have a computer with the proper software, uh, the radio puts out beacons as I travel. It can also do packet radio while mobile, so I can send emergency information as if I was at my desk. It's capable of up to 50 watts of trans transmit power. It is the opinion of many of us in the Denver Radio Club that a good choice for a new ham is an HT radio. HT means handy talky and is sometime, sometimes called a handheld. HTs are small, self-powered portable radios which can be recharged usually with a charger that comes with the radio. There are many brands and many models available if you just Google ham radio outlet you'll find a bunch of them. Also online uh, you'll find some that are actually $40 and uh, they're VHF, UHF, they're made in China so no one knows much about them as far as how long they'll last but for $40 it's a good way to find out if you're even interested in the hobby. So while those radios for $40 don't cost much they also don't have very many features, such as APRS or packet capability, J GPS or cross-band repeating. Here's one that does. It's my Kenwood HD D72 handheld radio, HD. It's a VHF UHF analog radio which is fully featured with built-in APRS, GPS, packet, cross-band repeating and a built-in TNC. The price is currently $449 at Ham Radio Outlet. As far as an HT radio goes, it does everything I could ever need it to do.
when you receive this radio, you will need to get up get the uh, menus all set up correctly to be able to use APRS and packet. On my YouTube channel, KD0PHG, uh, you'll see a bunch of uh, subscriptions uh, that tell you how to set that up. Also, the man that invented APRS has got some very important information there. You'll also need to set the uh, program all your repeater frequencies that you intend to use as well as simplex re re uh, frequencies. This amounts to programming in the frequency a plus or minus shift and a tone that is required for the repeater uh, before it can accept your signal and retransmit it. Simplex frequencies don't require anything but the frequency. Programming can be done right on the keypad. APRS and packet messages can also be done there. However, it's much easier to do with a computer and a software program and the required cable to go from the computer to the radio. The Kenwood D72 comes with the cable, a link to download the software online, and a battery recharger. This radio is totally self-contained unlike some of the brands that require separate TNCs and GPS units. The antenna is a rubber duck antenna which works very well in our area to hit all the local repeaters from within my residence. It's got a maximum output of 5 watts but can be lowered to conserve power. So in summary, in the words of our one of our members, Bill W6OAV, just get on the air, start talking, don't worry about CB lingo, you don't have any of that. Just talk. Uh, anybody uh, in the ham uh, bands are going to come back to you eventually, talk to you and help you out, and they're a great help. You're going to make a lot of friends on in this hobby. So 73's and welcome. KD0 PHG and we're gonna be out.